What do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? Depression or anxious eating disorders? Now that's quite a sharp turn between those set of questions, but from the title of this video, you can already tell that today's topic is quite sensitive and it may be triggering for a lot of people. But don't fret, because we'll try our best and approach this subject as mildly and as lightly as we can. The month of May was Mental Health Awareness Month, but that doesn't mean that it should end there. In today's video, we're going to share how you can achieve a healthier weight without having to sacrifice and jeopardize your mental health. And before we get all nitty and gritty, we would like to emphasize that this video is not to replace professional medical advice. Depression and eating disorders are serious conditions, and juggling with that weight management can be extremely difficult. So please take our advice with a grain of salt, because what we'll be talking about today are only starting points to help you kickstart your health journey. Think of this video as a stepping stone to achieving your goals. It is still of utmost importance that you speak with your doctor if you have any of these conditions and you wish to manage your weight in a safe and healthy way. So the big question is, can I manage my weight even if I feel depressed? Can I shed pounds even if I have an unhealthy relationship with food? The answer is yes. Depression, eating disorders, and weight management are somehow correlated with one another. The link between them is complex and it's also tricky to ascertain which causes which, but we're going to give you some strategies you can follow to help you cope with what you're going through while achieving your weight loss goals. Number 1. Figure out the what The first thing is figuring out what. Now, we're not telling you to go and figure out what exactly is the root of your woes and throes, what we're trying to say is that maybe you could figure out what parts of your daily routine you could improve. Maybe it's your irregular sleeping habits, maybe it's your static lifestyle, maybe it's your tendency to heavily snack on junk food, maybe it's your incessant scrolling on social media every single minute of the day. Just pick a habit or two that you'd like to change and we can start from there. Number 2. Break the link Once you've figured out which habit you'd like to change, the second step is breaking the link to the habit. Believe us when we say we know that it's easier said than done, but it isn't out of your reach too. Breaking the link is different for each person because each individual has a different reason for their depression and eating disorders, but generally speaking, you may find out that trying one or two of these tips may have a positive impact for you. Let's say you're someone who stays in all day watching TV. Experts highly encourage you to take up some kind of physical activity because people who stay active respond better to anti-depression treatments. You don't have to suddenly hit the gym 5 times a week or run 5 kilometers starting today. Take it easy. You could start out by doing some light stretching for just 15 minutes a day. If you feel good about doing that after a week, maybe you try going out for a 30 minute walk. That way, you could get your heart pumping, plus you get a bit of fresh air and some sunlight. If you're a homebody and you don't want to leave the nest, you could do some house cleaning too. People with depression usually can't bring themselves to clean their spaces, so if you're up for it, you could tidy up your space. This is a win-win because you get to move your body and you get to clear out your environment which has shown to help clear out your mind as well. What's great about being physically active is that aside from getting your body to move, your mind benefits from it as well because physical activity stimulates the release of happy hormones called endorphins. These happy chemicals are kind of like morphine. They make you feel euphoric and happy because of how they reduce the feeling of pain in your brain sounds the probability of addiction. Pretty neat, huh? Now, if you find yourself having trouble sleeping at night, you could set up your room and make it an environment that's inviting and more relaxing to sleep in. For starters, and this is a big one, eliminate external distractions, the major one being your phone. It's easy to fall down the internet rabbit hole when you have nothing but time, thoughts you want to suppress, and your phone in your hand. Keep your phone in silent mode, turn off your notifications, and place it in your cabinet or somewhere that it isn't within reach before sleeping. But if you're someone who can't sleep without some form of entertainment before getting some shut-eye, opt for a book instead. Aside from removing external distractions, tidy up your room. Nothing says a good night's sleep better than sleeping on a bed with fresh, clean sheets. And if you can, it will also be best to sleep in a room that has a slightly cooler temperature as it relates to your body's circadian rhythm and how your body naturally cools down during the evenings. Another tip is to keep your room dark, which is another reason why phones are not advisable before bed. Better sleep quality is achieved when the room is pitch black. You can achieve this by using blackout blinds or curtains, or you could channel your inner Holly Golighty by purchasing a sleep mask. Having a good night's sleep is crucial because studies have shown that an inappropriate amount of sleep can affect your weight negatively. It was shown that adults who slept for 4 hours a night had a higher chance of gaining weight because of increased hunger and appetite which may be due to the release of the hunger hormones called ghrelin and leptin when you're up all night. Now, let's say you struggle with eating healthy food. The solution is to keep junk food out of sight. 
The next time you're out to buy some groceries, pick out some healthy choices and fill your fridge and cabinets with nutritious foods. Avoid buying unhealthy snacks so that the next time you crave for something to eat, there's nothing but fresh produce and healthy snacks that you can munch on. As much as possible, try to avoid calorie counting too. This isn't the best way to approach weight loss because the numbers and the technicality of it all can be very overwhelming. It's not rocket science to know what kinds of foods are healthy, so approach eating with a mindset that you want to eat to nourish and fuel your body. You don't have to beat yourself up with calculating the numbers before you take a bite out of your meal. Just remember to eat in moderation and go nuts with whole foods. Number three, organize your thoughts. This may not be everyone's cup of tea, but journaling may help you sort through your internal thoughts and your feelings about weight management. Managing your weight while also trying to hold yourself together mentally is a very tough thing to do, so organizing your thoughts out on paper may be extremely helpful since writing it down makes it tangible and lays it all flat out in front of you which may help clear your mind out a bit. There's no need for you to follow a specific technique or a specific format when journaling. Just take your time to reflect and let your words pour out on paper. This is also a great time to ask yourself why you want to do this? Is it to please other people? Is it to look and feel good? Is it because you want to live a happy and fulfilling life that isn't controlled by the fear of food, of weight, and of self-deprecation? Organize your thoughts and think about it. And lastly, number four, seek professional help. If none of these tips seem to work for you, seeking professional help is the best way to go, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Seeking professional medical advice is actually more advisable since they get to tailor your treatment according to your needs. They may give you a combination of therapy and medications, especially if they deem it appropriate for your situation. This brings us to the end of the video. To sum it up, achieving your physical and mental health goals simultaneously are not impossible. It's not all doom and gloom if you're going through a rough patch. Just remember to take things at your own pace and be consistent. Sure, the journey can be extremely bumpy. You'll feel a little lost. You'll experience some mishaps. But then again, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. We know that quote is something you can almost immediately find in the internet, but here's something that we also know, you can do it. Thank you for tuning into our channel and we hope you learned a thing or two. If you're new here, why not give us a like if you enjoyed watching this video. Feel free to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell too, so you wouldn't miss any of our videos to improve your overall well-being. And of course, if you enjoyed today's content, check out this related video to see more. Until next time.